right, me and Lee's gonna head into the woods. We don't know what we're looking for today. We're just gonna see what all's going on down there. We just uh, hadn't really discussed what we're going after this time. We usually do have a plan. Today we have no plan. We just gonna go look, see what's coming up. So, we're heading down. Heading down the hill. I'll have to shut this off to get down the hill in a minute. The uh, bay apples are up thick. I don't know if there's any bloom in yet. Any blooms? There's a bloom. Okay, that's May apples. What we call May apples, and that little bloom will turn into a little fruit. And good luck getting one. Yeah. Cause when they fruit, it ain't long before the uh, something gets some varmints, the coons or something, possums. I don't know what. Huh? But if you're lucky enough to get one, they're delicious. Deer, coons, something gets them. They are delicious if you're lucky enough to get one. So, here we go down the hill. It's getting pretty growed up. That's why I keep stumbling, Mr. Willie. No, I Because <laughs> it's getting growed up down through here. All right. So, you really Whew, gotta go down this hill. So I'm gonna turn this off and get down the hill. And then we'll see what's down there. Jewelweed, I always show jewelweed. One of my favorite plants, I believe. <laughs> because I used to get poison ivy every year until I discovered jewelweed and started making jewelweed soap. And, uh, haven't had it since. I almost hate to say that, but I might jinx myself. <laughs> since I've discovered jewelweed and started making jewelweed soap, I have not had poison ivy since. So there you go, that's jewelweed. And it'll get tall and have a orange bloom. There's some cleavers. That's a big old cleaver. Cleavers are edible, but that's a big old one, probably tough. I'm not sure I would want that big tough one. So here we go back to going down the hill. There's some chickweed out here. Here comes Debbie behind me. Chickweed. Chickweed is really good for you. Good medicinal plant. That's a big long one. Look at all that chickweed. Big, long, nice one. So, that's good in salad, stir-fry, make medicine. Lots of good uses for that. I picked that up on the way back by and get that. And uh, I'm going to do some stir-fry, I think, tonight with uh, some bok choy I grew. And I might throw that in there. So, let's see. What's that? Do you know what that is? I just showed it a little bit ago. Jewelweed. It's got a very juicy, almost um, iridescent green stem and the leaves. There you go. And there's another one. They're all over down here. Another one. All right. So there you go. Learn jewelweed. It's a great plant. And learn your edibles, which are uh, the uh, uh, two of them that I just showed. The cleavers and the uh, chickweed are two edibles, good greens to do in salad, or they're also medicinal. So, good ones to know. Lots of jewelweed, I see. What else do we see? Um, 
Well, this ain't a real good place to just be standing. Well, look at that weird uh -huh. tree. Yeah, it's all rotted yeah. and it's leaning this way. Rotted tree leaning this way. All right, I need to move on. Yep. So says Lee. Could be a widow maker. A widow maker. Mm -hmm. Well, it'd be a widower maker if it hit me. What? Right. Yeah. Okay. What else? We know there's uh, lots of uh, stinging nettle. We just done that video on stinging nettle last. Got some of that. We need to gather some more of that soon. But we just done that in the last video, so we're not going to do that today. The, uh, hmm. Just going to kind of walk, see what we got. What we come across that's edible or medicinal. There's tons of stuff out here. Just nothing I'm ready for at the moment or want to pick at the moment but um, I'll tell a little tale on myself while we're walking of getting my toes stepped on at church of uh, my preacher's been preaching on loving one another and you know we can say oh I love everybody I don't hate nobody I love everybody but when he gets to preaching on it, it makes you think twice and uh, makes you think, um, are, are there, or is there anybody? Is there anybody that's just kind of unlovable to you? And uh, most of us do have somebody, somebody that's offended us or somebody that's uh, wronged us or talked bad about us or our children. Even more so, somebody that's done your children wrong or your, your child wrong. And you just can't hardly stand them. And you uh, maybe um, haven't forgiven them. And um, you would maybe, maybe not, maybe you wouldn't say I hate that person because you don't want to say you hate anybody. But do you really love them? And so, he got me to thinking, and, uh, you know, I, I have that problem, uh, for sure, in my life. And he kind of made me realize that, yeah, there's a few people that have wronged me or my family that I haven't forgiven, and, um, and that's wrong. It's wrong. So, we're supposed to love them. We, we might not like what they've done. We might not like what they do. Maybe they're into things that we don't like and we don't uh, like what they do or what they've done. But the Lord brought all of us from some place that somebody felt the same way about us. And um, most of us maybe sometime in our life have wronged somebody. And so, according to the Bible... We're supposed to still love them, or at least love their soul, and want them to go to heaven. So we're supposed to pray for them. And um, even if we don't like what they've done or what they do, we're supposed to still love them. Uh, as far as especially loving their soul and wanting to witness to them and, and, and maybe help them do better. And uh, maybe even get them... Um, saved through our testimony and our love. And so the Lord really dealt with me on that. And uh, I'm trying to work that out in my life. So, so that's my little testimony of the preacher stepping on my toes lately. And um, really the, de the Lord, the Lord really working with me or dealing with me on that. So there you go. All right, let's see what we can find out here to take home. What are we taking home today? I've seen a lot of edibles. I've seen um, purple dead nettle and the cleavers and the um, chickweed. We'll go back and do chickweed. Go back by that chickweed and I'll grab that chickweed and, and uh, maybe show how to identify chickweed and, and uh, it's 
edible and medicinal. Chickweed is also medicinal, so we'll talk about that a little bit after I pick that one up and get back to the house. Lots of jewelweed. I'm just seeing jewelweed everywhere. And I will get that later on. I make jewelweed soap and jewelweed salve. Uh, do sell that on my Etsy. I have an Etsy store for that. But I'm not real thrilled about doing the Etsy. I think I had maybe rather you um, email me if you want jewelweed soap or salve. And I will um, give you my PayPal. And you can PayPal me the money. And I'll send it to you. And I feel like that would be a better way to sell it because the Etsy takes so much of it that I have to charge more. Email address is in the description below. So if you want jewelweed soap or salve that will help you get through the itchies and help prevent the itchies, I usually, after I've been in the woods or we are been weeding, I will go to the house and wash up good with my jewelweed soap. And then if I do happen to get a little itchy spot of something, of anything, even bug bites or anything, I will put on the jewelweed salve and that helps um, a lot. And I've had repeat customers, so it works. Because I've had quite a few repeat customers that have used it and then came back for more. The soap will last me one season maybe because I wash with it every time I've been out in the woods or anything. So uh, it's not the kind of soap that you just use to bathe in. It's the kind of, it's medicinal soap that you would just use on occasion when you've been in the woods. And then the salve you can use anytime you have a little itchy spot, either bug bite or anything else, anything else itchy like the stinging nettle since we're right here beside the stinging nettle patch we done stinging nettle in the last video so go check that out if you didn't and there is stinging nettle so there you go it will help that as you just might have saw in the last video Okay, we're going to walk the path back to the creek. I showed the creek in a video a time or two ago, a couple times. We'll walk back and see how it's looking. Our creek is not usually real full, but it has been raining a lot, so it may be pretty full again. You usually can see the rock bars. Yeah. It's going a little bit. I hear, I hear it down there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Sprinkling through. Lee walks this creek looking for uh, arrowheads and stuff. And he has found arrowheads in this creek. He says, shoo, don't tell nobody. <laughs> well, don't come to our creek looking. We'll shoot you. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I'm not kidding. Hmm. Anyway. Not unless you let us know ahead. We don't want you back here if you're a stranger and we don't know that you're coming. Because then our dog might get you. <laughs> Molly, would you get anybody? Molly, would you get somebody? No. No, I ain't getting nobody. Where's Tippy? Tippy ain't getting nobody for sure. Hmm. <laughs> Cat bite. <laughs> anyway, there's another big rock bar. And then on down there somewhere, I hear the water running. So it's running on through. There's Tippy. What are you doing over there, Tippy? Tippy. Tippy. Tippy, where are you going, Tippy? Where are you going? Where are you going? There he is, down there. Where are you going, Tippy? He done crossed the creek. 
He has crossed the creek. Okay. Let's see. So, we probably just need to get some stinging nettle. We're going to get some more stinging nettle. Maybe not today. <laughs> or maybe. Maybe this afternoon or tomorrow. And I'm going to get that chickweed for my stir fry. And uh, I'm walking all up in the stinging nettle, but I have on long pants today, so I'm okay. The last video I had on capris, and they got the bottom of my leg, and I had to use some jewelweed to <clears throat> kill the itch. And we showed the flocks. And they are medicinal. Um, or it used to be. The Indians evidently used to use it. But uh, people don't use it much anymore. They used it. Uh, I think the main thing I read about it was they used it for boils. So boils and there was something else. Uh, that's in the last video. So you can look that up. But it looks similar to periwinkle. But there are differences and we don't have periwinkle that I know of. This is wild purple phlox. <clears throat> so, I've not seen periwinkle here that I know of. Unless I got them mixed up and seen one thinking it was the other. But this is the wild purple phlox. So, I've never used it. May need to someday. I might ought to get me some and go ahead and make me a salve. Make me an oil and then a salve for boils or whatever comes up like that. There was something else uh, that they used it for. Okay, kitty, you got to move. You're making me. <clears throat> Have a hard time walking. Well, he's done going way over there. Through here. There's lots of little paths back here. Me and Lee and the animals have made. And they're getting kind of growed up. I'd like to clear them out good. Because it gets pretty growed up in the summer. And then I'm a little leery. Uh, you know, watching for snakes and things. But we haven't had... Uh, we haven't seen hardly any snakes on our property. Much less... Um, um, <clears throat> poisonous ones. Okay. Okay, here's something I could show. This is yellow violet. You know, you have the wild purple violets. We've shown those before. This is the yellow violet. <clears throat> Down here in the woods. And it has, the leaves are similar to the wild purple violet. But it has these little yellow blooms, but they close up. They, um, they are open for a little while, and they may open up during when the sun hits them. I'm not sure. They may open up when the sun hits them, but they permanently close. They close up and stay that way, and it looks like a little fruit, but it's actually the bloom that has closed up. And that is yellow violet. Now, from what I remember... <laughs> From what I remember, yellow violet is not edible. Uh, maybe it tastes bitter or something. It's not, you, nobody uses it. Most people do not use it. I can't remember exactly why. I will look that up and tell you, but I just remember the yellow violet not being one you want to use. So there you go, yellow violet. I kind of veered off the path, and Lee is way over yonder. So I'm trying to get back on the path somewhat, or at least out of the weeds. Goodness. Okay, that's an interesting branch right there. That is a big old river birch. We've got a couple of little river, river birches that we planted in our front yard when we moved here, and they are very small compared to this, so I'm assuming this is a really old one. There. 
And there, there's three of them. Like three of them there together. That's what they usually do. Anyway, see the papery river birch. Oh, there's another one. Yeah. But we never, I never can find chaga on these river birches. So I'm assuming it doesn't grow on river birch or it doesn't grow in our area. We, uh, we live in a humid area. Uh, we're not way down south. We're about middle of the country, but it uh, gets very humid here. And uh, we are in uh, 7A zone. So, um, some people argue that with you and say it's 6B, but it is not. It is 7A. A little further over in Kentucky is 6B. But if you look up certain maps that split that up and don't run straight across we are in 7a so i'll show that here Okay. All right. Well, look at there. That's what that giant woodpecker's been doing. We have two. We have two that we know of of the giant pelated woodpeckers, and I mean they can tear some stuff up, and they're loud, and that's what they've been doing. Back here. Oh, we've seen them quite a few times, but most of the time you just hear them, and they are loud. They knock loud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. We are headed out. We didn't find anything different that we didn't already really know about, and gonna get eventually we're gonna get a bunch of the uh stinging nettle again and a bunch of the jewel weed later on and the uh cleavers are pretty big i'm not gonna do cleavers but i am gonna go get this chickweed so there we go he's right there i dug him up all right that's it. We're going to head back up to the house with this chickweed. He's after the cat. Why are you after the cat? Leave the cat alone. You know better. Yeah, you know better. He knows better, but he just can't help. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. Um, anyway, we're going out of here, y'all. I have my chickweed back up in the house, and I have washed it up. And uh, I had just pulled that whole plant up, so I had to get the roots and stuff off of there. And I washed it up good with cold water. And there's what I've got left. I just snapped the roots and stuff off the end, washed it good with cold water. I'm going to put this in a bag, uh, a baggie with um, a paper towel and uh, put it in the refrigerator to keep it until I get ready to do my stir fry tonight. So I just wanted to show you, um, and I may put a picture here. I'm not sure how well you can see this. So I may put a picture here to kind of show it better. But chickweed is real uh, feathery looking, a little sparse looking. Um, now this is a little older. Uh, they come up in the spring and they'll have a little white flowers. When they first come up, they don't. They've got the leaves on opposite sides, opposite directions, if that makes sense. Let me show that again. Okay, it's got the leaves, the little, little tiny leaves on this side this way, and then the next step up, it's the other way. On opposite sides, opposite directions, back and forth, all the way up. And then at the top will be a little 
uh, usually a white flower. This has got the, it's closed. The flower is closed. It's got the little um, bud. But um, I'll put a picture here in case you can't see this very well. Um, so... So there you go. That is um, chickweed. And um, chickweed is uh, it's delicious in a salad. Uh, stir fry or anything, but I usually do it in a salad raw. I like to do some good raw spring salad stuff, wild plants. Um, that is so good for you and, and uh, flushes out toxins and um uh, and good early spring is the best time to do it uh you can eat them later these are a little older uh usually when they first come up and they're little um it's gonna show something that would look like what it first come up here well the one i showed first i guess the little you know little ones first come up with the leaves and I can usually spot it then, but, you know, some people can't spot it till it's a little bit bigger uh, and has more of a distinct look. But when they come up little and young, oh my goodness, so good for you. This is still good for you, even this this size. But uh, I, I'm going to do a stir fry tonight because I have a bunch of bok choy I need to use. So I'm going to find some wild plants to throw in my stir fry with my bok choy. That's why I'm not using it as a salad because I need to use my bok choy. So, um, so chickweed is um, good for, uh, it's an anti-inflammatory. It's good for, um, for um, pain, uh, inflammatory pain. Uh, it's supposed to be good for weight loss. I'm not sure. <laughs> about that. <laughs> uh, it's supposed to help with weight loss, uh, weight, weight management maybe, um, but uh, it's good for, it's anti-inflammatory. Uh, it also has quercetin in it, quercetin, quercetin, I may be saying that wrong. Um, it has quercetin in it that is uh, uh, good for a lot of things, uh, good for the immune system and good for healing colds and flus and uh, what, viruses, viruses, uh, good for viruses uh, is, is um, you know, a few things I could think of. It's loaded with vitamins and minerals and all of that and just overall good for you. So, you know, like I say with all edible plants in the wild, most of the edible plants are medicinal and vice versa. Most, if you go out and get an edible plant, a wild edible plant is usually also medicinal and good for so many things that if we would just eat these things, we would heal our bodies naturally, um, you know. And if we knew, if we learn what's good for what, we uh, really um, uh, can heal our can can heal ourselves. So <laughs> I probably should be eating this raw because it's uh, way better for you raw. It's got a distinct flavor. It, it's kind of grassy. It's kind of a grassy taste, honestly. Um, the older they get, they can get a little bitter, but this is not, this is not bitter. It's got kind of a sweet, grassy taste. Um, I don't know how else to describe it. Um, but anyway, it's good for you. <laughs> it's all that matters. It's good for you. Anyway, so there you go. I would love to make this in a salad. I really would. And I probably should. But I need to use that dang bok choy up.
So, I'm going to make stir fry by golly. I may have done a video already on chickweed. I don't remember. If I did, I will post that in the description below, the link. If I didn't, I know that I did do a video on the um, um, cleavers. So I will post the video of the cleavers. I'll post that link in the description or at the end of this video or both. Um, we have a whole foraging playlist of um, wild things, foraging playlist. And uh, we've covered a lot of different plants. So go watch that if you haven't. And even if you have, it wouldn't hurt to watch it again because you might find something else that you haven't learned. And um, now we are doing the walk in the woods. This is number 10, wow. Number 10 of our Walk in the Woods series. And we appreciate you watching them. Uh, go back and watch our, our uh, wild plants, wild things, foraging videos and our Walk in the Woods videos and learn how to uh, um, identify some of these. We're not great teachers. I've said that over and over. We're not great teachers. Mostly we want to encourage you to learn about these things. And they are so, they're edible and so medicinal, so good for you that we want everyone to learn what's in your area. So, there you go.